so let's hear some more from her diary. November 8th. We lost our last hog this morning early. Soldiers took him out of the pen. Me and Buddy went around to hunt for him, and everywhere that we inquired, they would say that they saw two soldiers driving him off to eat him. We'll have to live on bread. November 12th. I could not go to sleep for fear they would set our house on fire. November 14th. They came burning Atlanta today. We all dread it because they say that they will burn the last house before they stop. November 15th. This has been a dreadful day. Things have been burning all around us. We dread tonight because we do not know what moment they will set our house on fire. November 16th. Oh, what a night we had. They came burning down the storehouse, and about night it looked as if the whole town was on fire. We all sat up all night. If we had not stayed up all night, our house would have been burnt up, for the fire was very near, and the soldiers were going around setting houses on fire where they were not watched. They behaved very badly. Mm -hmm. They all left town about one o'clock this evening, and we were glad when they left, for nobody knows what we have suffered since they have come in. With Atlanta in ashes, most of the Union soldiers marched off towards Savannah. Carrie's family had been about one of about 50 families to remain in Atlanta. Her house had been stared, but now it stood as an island in a sea of cinders. So what happened to Carrie Berry? Well, after the Union soldiers left, her father was arrested for staying in Atlanta with the Yankees, but was soon released. In the new year of 1865, Carrie's mind returned to school, church, and a new sister. She remained in Atlanta throughout her life, married an ex-Confederate soldier, and became the mother of two sons and a daughter.